wedding speech do's and don'ts. So you are the best man or the maid of honor at a wedding, and thinking of those tense moments when few dozen or few hundred eyes are going to stare at you, looking at you while you are delivering the speech. How to manage those not so sweet minutes that are going to put your heart racing in a sprint. There are some ways to follow so that you pass with flying colors to an extent that the whole assembly enjoys it including you. First of all your wedding speech shouldn't be offensive to someone in the audience. It's always a good idea to avoid any comments on religion and politics. You may not have meant something, but it may get perceived that way. This may lead to some troublesome situation. 2NDLY, avoid being on a negative note. You don't need to tell people that this is the first time you are delivering such a speech before a huge audience like this. In any case if it's a bad one people will already have guessed it, you don't need to confirm it and lose some more confidence in the process. Avoid jokes that fall in personal zone. You may crack jokes as a generic entity but shouldn't dwell on a particular individual or community. This always leads to quarrelsome situation. Also don't ever laugh at your own jokes. If you still feel that the joke was good but the public didn't respond to it properly, it will be a good idea to drop all the jokes from the speech. When you are waiting in the queue to have your speech delivered that's the tensest moment at times more tense than the actual delivery of the speech. You can overcome this problem by repeating the first line of your speech to yourself while someone else is delivering the speech. If you are going to speak about some anecdote or story related to the couple check whether other speakers have already used it. If that is the case, it's always better to remove it from your list. Your audience may not be interested in hearing the same thing again. Remember if you've an opportunity to be a speaker at a wedding, treat this as the greatest opportunity of life. Important to know is that number one in the audience wants you to fail on this. Everyone is on your side. It may not be true for speech opportunities at other places. What currently defines African American culture? African American culture can be regarded as both part of and distinct from American culture. From the days of the slave trade Africans and African Americans have contributed by means of literature, art, agricultural skills, foods, music, and language to American culture. Even before the abolition of slavery, African Americans were known for their cultural ingenuity. Although in many cases they were literally forced to adopt and mimic the traditions of their slave masters, African American slaves would still clandestinely practice their beliefs. Today perhaps the most definitive form of African American culture can be seen through their expression of the musical art form. The forms of music that best typify African American culture are those of hip-hop, rap, blues, R&B and gospel. Many people shrug off these forms of music as noisy garbage however they are in truth an expression of political, social or class discrimination of some form. This form of expression dates as far back as the slavery days when African Americans also used song composition as a vehicle of social relief. They would compose songs in their native languages that described their emotions regarding the situation they were subjected to, their slave masters and the evolution of their lives. If one has the means to study these musical genres which define African American culture today it will become quite evident that these songs serve as a reminder that the past and the present are clearly linked when it comes to understanding the meanings of African American music. African American music is perhaps one of the most pervasive African American cultural influences in America today and is among the most dominant in mainstream popular music. Music genres such as hip-hop, R&B, funk, soul, techno and several other contemporary American musical forms found its origins in black communities. Thus due to its popularity and perhaps even its personality many African Americans use musical genres to define their own individuality wedding trends. Top 8 Wedding Trends for Summer 2006 Bye Bye Bland and Ordinary Hello Inventive and Inspired and conventional wedding standards out the window and embrace your creative side. Here's a peek at what's hot for summer 2006. 1. Less than strong greater than unique settings less than strong greater than to add a personal touch, couples are venturing outside of the traditional ceremony at place of worship followed by a banquet room reception. The beach remains the most popular spot for summer brides but also consider a mountainside, garden, yacht, museum, lighthouse, theme park or historic mansion. Anything goes be original. 
2. Less than strong greater than destination weddings less than strong greater than start the honeymoon early and head to an exotic destination to exchange vows. Destination weddings are becoming more and more popular with couples only inviting close family and friends to share in the festivities. This saves a lot of money time and stress and allows everyone to enjoy a fabulous summer vacation. What guest won't appreciate that? 3. Less than strong greater than keep it small less than strong greater than forget inviting 400 of your closest friends. Who needs the hassle? Today's weddings are more personalized and intimate with many guest lists topping out at 100 people. Trim your guest list and treat your true friends and love to something truly spectacular. 4. Less than strong greater than buzz on bars less than strong greater than they're not just for drinks anymore. Take your guests on a culinary journey of the senses with strategically placed food stations. Dynamic bars with bite-sized samples allow guests to mingle and savor a number of flavors. So when you think catering think tiny and scattered. 5. Less than strong greater than more seating options less than strong greater than go ahead, ditch the head table and opt for something a little different. More personal less awkward. Consider instead a sweetheart table for two and enjoy a few minutes of alone time with your honey. Sit with your parents or other guests. It may afford you the opportunity to spend some quality time with people not a part of the wedding party. Or do away with reserved tables and assigned seating altogether, and mingle with your guests throughout mealtime. 6. Less than strong greater than go clubbing less than strong greater than of the moment brides are consulting the club scene for wedding decor inspiration. Transform your reception space into a swank lounge with romantic nooks and crannies conducive to conversing and flirting. Think sexy lighting, seductive music, plush couches and low coffee tables. 7. Less than strong greater than a warm welcome less than strong greater than with the emergence of destination weddings and guests often spread all over the country. Savvy couples are taking advantage of a golden opportunity to offer a warm welcome and set the tone for a fabulous series of events. What a great idea. Welcome baskets are an added touch that immediately comforts the travel weary and makes your guests feel right at home. 8. Less than strong greater than beyond blush and bashful less than strong greater than gone are the days of adhering to light pastels and muted shades. Today's summer brides are opting for bold and interesting pairings of colors. Not afraid of mixing purples and oranges the post-millennium color palette is expanding. Especially hot this year purple in vogue in every shade. Weight loss for brides. Drop at least one dress size before your wedding. The stress and anxiety that most brides experience as their wedding day approaches can be overwhelming for them. The amount of preparation involved and the countless number of details needing attention can make it very difficult to eat sensibly and maintain even a modest level of good nutrition. I can recall countless conversations with brides who are so stressed out in the month or so before their wedding that they abandon all good eating habits and either starve themselves or binge on junk food to handle the stress. Many are genuinely terrified that they'll be overweight and unattractive on their wedding day or even worse won't be able to fit into their dream wedding gown. I've been working with a personal trainer for the past 10 years who continually reminds me how just a few simple changes to your daily routine can make a huge difference. The four basic principles I outline below really do work. I've had personal success using these strategies and continue to follow them on a daily basis. Many of my clients who have requested my help and followed this advice have had remarkable results. Start this program at least three to four weeks before your wedding day and see for yourself. 1. Water. Water and more water. Hydration is critical. While the benefits are countless this is one of the hardest things to implement into your daily routine. Whenever I would neglect this item my trainer would recite how water lowers body fat, flushes cellulite, improves digestion, gets rid of dark circles under the eyes and makes you feel full. These are just a few of the benefits of drinking the required 2.5 liters of water per day. This may seem like a lot but I found the easiest way to get into the habit is to break the amounts down into manageable amounts. Keep a bottle of water beside your bed. Before you go to sleep drink one half the bottle and as soon as you wake up before your feet touch the floor drink the remaining one half bottle. Before each meal drink a half a bottle of water carry water with you and sip it throughout the day. I can't overemphasize how important this step is. 2. Go for a 10 minute walk every day. Start with this. You can always increase later after it becomes routine. 
it's enough to gently boost your metabolism and keep you active. 3. Eat often but only in small portions. Before I started this method of eating I would starve myself for a couple of days whenever I wanted to lose weight. It seemed logical to me at the time. When I started personal training I had to modify many of my bad eating habits. I had to start eating six meals a day. Don't panic, it's easier than it sounds. Every three to four hours from the time you wake up eat a little something. Your digestive system is far more efficient at handling a series of small meals than it's at tackling one large meal. I usually eat at 7 a.m., 10 a.m., 1 p.m., 4 p.m., 7 p.m. and 10 p.m. Your meal portions meat, veggies, carbs should be no larger than the palm of your hand and no thicker than the palm of your hand. 4. Eat healthy. I could spend days offering suggestions on meal variations but there are many excellent books that have been written to give you ideas. I will share my recommendations in another upcoming article. So to make it simple a typical meal should be a protein, a carbohydrate and a vegetable or fruit. Here is a sample daily meal plan that I eat to get you started. Meal 1. Protein shake with 1% milk. I like whey protein drinks such as Isopro. Meal 2. One half an apple and cottage cheese or yogurt. Meal 3. Piece of chicken, no skin, and a small salad. Meal 4. Cheese and the balance of the apple. Meal 5. Piece of lean meat, rice or potatoes, vegetables. Meal 6. Low-fat chocolate pudding mixed with protein powder. 5. The best part reward yourself. Choose one day a week as your reward day and eat whatever you want and as much as you want. Whether you like pasta, cookies, ice cream or my personal favorite chocolate. Enjoy. Don't worry you won't gain fat if you do this because for the past six days your body has been used to eating what I term clean food. On the seventh day your body thinks you are going to do the same and when you don't it gets fooled and eliminates the effects of the junk food. In essence you are tricking your body that day but you must eat cleanly on the following day. I've told many upcoming brides about this method of eating and almost all of them have emailed me back to let me know how thrilled they were at reaching their target goal of weight loss. I hope it works for you too. As a final note of encouragement, my daughter used this method of eating and in one year she went from a size 18 to a size 2. This was four years ago and she has still maintained her weight to this day. These simple techniques will not only help you quickly, safely and effectively lose at least one dress size but they will also help you feel more energetic, vibrant and healthy. Not to mention the positive effect it will have on your skin texture and overall appearance. Stay on track and you'll be amazed at your results. Eat well, drink plenty of water and as you progress simply imagine your groom seeing you for the first time in your wedding gown and watching his jaw drop in speechless silence. Weird weather news we're one halfway through this warm weather month of August and the heat has become something of a burden and a hassle for many of us. Good thing the weather can be a source of amusement too sometimes. There were two reports last week about the weather that just made me smile. I'm retelling them here in an effort to provide you with something to smile or smirk about this summer. The first report which originated from Moscow in Russia, recounted how Alyana Gabatova, a Russian woman from the town of Uljanovsk was suing local weather forecasters for making a wrong prediction about the weather that ultimately ruined her holiday trip. It seems that local weather forecasters had predicted sunny weather and a temperature of around 82.4 degrees Fahrenheit for one weekend a couple of weeks ago. Based on that weather report, Gabatova planned a weekend camping trip to a nearby nature park. She packed carefully for what she anticipated would be a grand weekend frolicking under clear blue skies but instead of sunny weather she was greeted with non-stop rains all throughout the weekend. As a result Gabatova said her entire weekend was ruined and to top if off she caught a cold after getting soaked under all that rain. She later filed a suit in court against the weather forecasters. The local newspaper Noah J. Izvestigia reported that Gavitova was suing the weather forecasters to reimburse the travel costs of her aborted holiday camping trip. The paper said the court has yet to act on the woman's complaint. Now how's that for newfound freedom in the former communist republic? The other news report this time from a local U.S. newspaper told of how people can determine how warm the weather was going to be by listening to the chirping of crickets. Apparently all you've to do is count the number of chirps which crickets make in 15 seconds. Add the figure of 40 to that and that's going to be close to the weather for that day. 
The report said that doing this will put you a couple of degrees of the actual air temperature. Too bad the Lady Gabatova didn't know this early enough. Otherwise, she would have noticed that no crickets were chirping during her holiday weekend and would have cancelled her trip. Wedding theme central, Vegas, baby who hasn't thought of getting married in Las Vegas at some point or another. Whether it's the glitz and the glamour of the city or just the fun environment you might want to take that and put it into your own wedding. And you won't have to run off and elope to do it either. Bring everyone with you. Blue suede shoes No you don't have to have the groom dress up as Elvis to have a traditional Vegas wedding although that's not a bad idea. You can start off the wedding plans with an invitation that looks like a deck of cards. This is an indication of the fun relaxed atmosphere of the wedding. You may even want to drop in a few real cards just for good measure. Take the theme even further by naming all of the tables by the various hotels and casinos in Vegas the Flamingo, Bellagio and the Golden Nugget are just a few. You can have favors that are Vegas-inspired cards, poker chips, etc. You may want to make the ceremony look like one of the strips wedding chapels. Put up a sign that says Chapel of Love or something like that. And yes there's more one of the neatest ways to capture your Vegas wedding is to find someone who can create a cake in the shape of your favorite Vegas building. Why not have a cake in the shape of the Sphinx at the Luxor Hotel? Or perhaps you want something more clichered like the old boy Elvis himself. Although the groom may not want to dress up like Elvis you may want to incorporate red and black into your overall color scheme. Dot. These are the colors of Vegas after all. Perhaps you can even set up small slot machines or card tables for the night. Hire a few blackjack dealers and you are sure to have some impressed and satisfied guests. Food is easy for a Vegas wedding because buffet is the way to go in the casinos. Set up a similar food sampling and people will forget that they're not in Vegas but at your wedding. And of course a lounge singer is always nice but not necessary. Having a Vegas-themed wedding is all about having fun. Perhaps you were engaged in Vegas or just want to capture its essence either way get creative and let the night be one you can bet on. What do the insulated flame-resistant work uniforms actually contain? A lot of talk has been made about insulated flame-resistant workwear in recent times, especially in places where there are fire hazards to the workers. Actually speaking insulated flame-resistant workwear has only entered into the market in recent years and people still don't know much about how effective they're. Do they really keep flames away as they promised to do? And what do they actually contain? Typically the insulated flame-resistant work uniforms are made with a fabric known as Endura with a fireproof lining on the inside. Endura is a recent patent, which contains a blend of cotton and nylon in a fixed ratio. They're present to the extent of 88% and 12% respectively and both fabrics have a job to perform. The nylon used in these insulated flame-resistant work uniforms is the part that's effective in keeping the flames away. This nylon is known as the high-tenacity nylon. The cotton forms the very important task of keeping the fabric as natural as possible and also providing with a passage of air through the fabric due to the inherent porosity of the material. The lining provided inside the material is more effective in fireproofing the work uniform. Typically the lining is made of a kind of fire-retardant plastic fiber known as mode acrylic. The mode acrylic is battered onto the inner surface of the twill cloth. Together this adds in the fire protection. In insulated flame-resistant work where every part of the uniform is tried to be made as fire-retardant as possible. This includes the zippers. The zippers are not made of plastic and cloth but instead they're made of brass. For the attachment to the cloth a particular type of fire-resistant material known as Nomex is used. This ensures that even in the case of a fire hazard, the zippers will not catch fire, thus taking the fire to the inner clothes of the wearer. Buttons and hooks, etc. are all made of fire-resistant materials keeping not a single region from where the fire can imperil the person wearing the uniform. There are several kinds of clothes that are made insulated flame resistant nowadays so whatever design you are looking out for you are sure to get it. The most popular are the duck overalls, bib overalls and the coveralls. But you will also find shirts, trousers, jackets and hoods made with fire resistant protection. The best place to check out insulated flame resistant clothes for your company is definitely the internet. The reason is that you can shop for more variety without having to burn gas and spend time in visiting various shops that may eventually not have what you are looking for. 
You can find all the big brands in insulated flame resistant wear on our website and feel free to browse through our collections. You online retailer will welcome the opportunity to speak with you to discuss your requirements and even your budget. Wedding speech templates. As the best man you are an integral part of the wedding process. It was up to you to throw the perfect bachelor party. On the day of the wedding you not only made sure the groom was looking sharp but also made sure he got to his wedding on time with his bride's ring. Now as you are sitting to the groom's left at the reception you stand and say I would like to propose a toast. Although you've done all your duties perfectly up to this point the wedding toast determines how you will be remembered by everyone in attendance. The last thing you want is to look into the crowd at 100 of blank stares as you stumble over your words. Not to worry by following some simple tips and guidelines you'll have an instant wedding toast that will impress the bride and groom and leave your audience with tears in their eyes. The ideal wedding speech should be between 2 and 4 minutes. Normally in addition to the best man's wedding toast, the father of the bride, the groom and the maid of honor should all be prepared to give a wedding speech. The father of the bride's speech is should be given first. It consists of a congratulations to the groom for becoming part of the family and wishes of good luck to the bride and groom. The groom speaks next taking time to thank his family and friends for coming to the wedding and bringing gifts. The best man's speech follows the groom's wedding speech. The best man's speech should be a funny speech, which is why it's so memorable to the audience. Finally the maid of honor's speech is the a quick, concise wedding speech that signals it's time to get back to dancing at the reception. If you've read this far and still feel lost or overwhelmed here are three words for you, don't be. You don't have to be a world-renowned writer to write a memorable wedding speech. If you don't know where to start instantweddingtoasts.com has the answer for you. They provide over 100 wedding speech templates for immediate download. All you need to do is add your personal information about the bride and groom into the wedding speech template and before you know it you've a memorable instant wedding toast. Whether you are giving a father of the bride speech, the groom speech, the best man toast or the maid of honor speech there is a template for you. You may be asking yourself, why should I use a wedding speech template? The answer is simple. Weddings are a stressful time and by using a wedding speech template, you are freeing up time to use on all your other wedding duties. Instant wedding toast templates are also the easiest way to guarantee that you'll give a speech that's memorable to everyone in your audience including the bride and groom. You'll know that on the wedding day, whether you are the father or the groom the best man or the maid of honor you can stand up and say I'd like to propose a toast with confidence because you know that you are about to put a tear in every eye in your audience. Wedding vows, 7 tips for personalizing your own. The wedding vow is the promise the bride and the groom make to each other during the wedding ceremony. A wedding without vows is an unfamiliar sight. Wedding vows are essential in any marriage ceremony. Nowadays modern wedding ceremonies offer the flexibility of allowing you to write and say your own vows. If you decide to write your own personally meaningful wedding vows, then here are a few things to keep in mind. 1. When you write your own vows you naturally start to think of all the good reasons why you want to be with the person you are going to marry. Writing your own vows makes the words you say more natural and from the heart. 2. If you don't know what to say or you don't know how to start it or you just want to add a few additional thoughts, then you can get ideas by reading books on the topic or performing a search on the web for free wedding vows. You can look at a few of the sample wedding vows online and borrow some ideas or words from each to add to your own unique vows. You can also try taking a particular sample and just changing a few words to suit you. You can also take a wedding vow you really like and use it as is. 3. If you want a touch of artistic expression to your vows try adding a few lines of poetry from the popular works by Gibran, Keats or Browning. 4. You may want to include some of the lyrics from your favorite song. Couples often have a song or tune that symbolizes their love for each other sort of like the song that's danced to during the reception or after the wedding dinner. 5. While you are thinking about what to say in your vows you may consider your lifestyles, your personalities and your interests. 7. Share with each other what you've written. You both can bounce back ideas, revive special moments you had with each other. This will help you discover what to include in your vows. Make sure you let the officiate or person who'll be marring you know ahead of time that you are writing your own vows. 
he, she can inform you about what must be included and may provide a few pointers. One final thought. Saying your wedding vows during the ceremony can be frightening. You may be scared that you might mess up. Well don't be. It's okay to stumble a bit. You will be able to correct yourself. Know that writing your own vows and practicing a bit will help you both gain the confidence you need to do well. What happens during your wedding reception normally? A wedding reception lasts for between 3 to 5 hours. To make the most of it, it's best to plan it. It's good to know in advance what you expect to happen and when you expect it to happen. The first hour wedding pictures are taken. Even if pictures were taken before the wedding ceremony, it's good to allocate some time for taking pictures at the beginning of the wedding reception. Music should be always present during the reception, and it should be started as soon as the first guests arrive. The receiving line should be in place to greet the arriving guests. Some of the most fitting songs for the introduction of the wedding party are, All You Need Is Love by The Beatles and At Last by Etta James. The second hour. By this time there should be mood setting music both the bride and groom and all the guests should have arrived. During the second hour the guests should view the bride and groom's first dance. Then the father and daughters and mother and groom's dance should follow. The third hour. By this time your hungry guests will welcome the announcement of the serving of the dinner. Usually the wedding party is seated and served first. Then food is served to the rest of the guests. During the dinner the best man proposes the same toast. The fourth or final hours. The tossing of the bride's bouquet is a popular activity for the later part of the wedding reception that's followed by the groom throwing the garter. The last dance is followed by the bride and groom's getaway. By the end of a successful reception you should have a lot of happy and full wedding guests. Use the above timeline to prepare your wedding reception with your wedding planner and your vendors. Wedding vows. How to use free wedding vows the right way. Wedding vows have been a long time tradition in wedding ceremonies. The promise of a lifetime commitment to each other despite of difficulties and differences guarantee that true love really exists. Isn't that a nice thought? Both the groom and bride exchange wedding vows. Commonly the vows would include a pledge of unselfishness, faithfulness and unconditional love. If you are in the dark on what to write in your wedding vows, don't be. You can find one of a kind wedding vow just by a click of your mouse. Surfing the internet for wedding vows proved to be a good source of ideas and tips that you can readily use on your wedding day. You may need to pay for the service on some sites but you can scout one for free too. Free wedding vows do away with the traditional and scripted promise one hears over and over again in common wedding ceremonies. The good thing about free wedding vows on the net aside from the fact that they're free, they give you the freedom and flexibility to write what you want to say from your heart. You can modify the free sample vows or if you find the writing incredibly heartwarming you can go ahead and use it without revisions. There are different vows you can choose from. Like everything vows can be customized according to the circumstances that you are in. There can be vows specially written for second marriage couples, couples with children, religious variations or wedding anniversaries. Using poetry as part of a vow is a common practice too. Those of Gibran, Keats and Browning are popular choices. You can browse on some internet sites that can even offer a free worksheet format and questionnaires that you need to fill out for you to easily modify your chosen wedding vow. These will serve as your guidelines so that you can re-evaluate what you want to say. Before that big day preparing your wedding vows is very crucial. Writing your vows together is a very special activity that is highly recommended. When writing a wedding vow together set a specific time and place where the two of you can have some privacy. You can jot down your promises on a separate sheet of paper and agree to compare what you've written after an hour or so first, write a letter professing your love for your partner. Don't hesitate to elaborate what you are feeling. Be creative and be sure to take note of your favorite and memorable times together either good or bad. Some suggestions are the first time that you met the moment when finally said yes or when a trying situation happened but still your love for each other's endure. Grab sweet lines from songs, books or scriptures that translate your love for your partner. After writing down your letter get back together and read each other's writings. Reading the letters can be truly heartwarming. Prepare to share a laugh or even occasional crying. Share your thoughts on the best part of the letter and from there start your outline for your vows. 
The secret of a good wedding vow is making it a personal commitment to your other one half and make sure that the message you convey are made clear and simple. Nothing beats anything that genuinely comes from the heart. Wedding week I do's and I don'ts for the mother of the groom. You are sitting in the right hand pew looking at your soon-to-be daughter-in-law. As she begins to say her vows, she glances your way. What do you see as she looks into your eyes? Is it adoration and gratitude over becoming part of your family, or does she quickly look away, unwilling or unwanting to make eye contact with you? Hopefully you aren't really in the church quite yet nor has the big day already come and gone. Ideally when reading this article you are at least one week away from the day your son marries the woman to whom he is committing himself and his life. If you want a healthy relationship with your future daughter-in-law, read on check out www.bradalblog.info, and carefully follow this advice. Unfortunately as the mother of the groom you've little to no say so in the wedding. Some people would argue that if you are footing some of the bill that you do have a right to express your opinion and have some things your way. As a wedding consultant I'm telling you that you don't. Unless your son's fiancé asks for your opinion don't give it. Don't even let your son in on your true thoughts about his bride-elect or the wedding that is to come. Mother-in-law relationships can get quite messy. Give them the best possible start by being quietly supportive. Another good quality for a groom's mom to have is flexibility. If the schedule says to be a certain place at a certain time and the bride changes her mind and minutes prior go with it. You and I both know what a major disaster this can lead to but in the end it doesn't matter. No mishaps are ever blamed on the mother of the groom unless she has been loudly unsupportive. Avoid being passive-aggressive as well. By this I mean don't neglect a time schedule just to get back at your son or his fiancé. Don't accidentally spill any substance on anyone or anything to make any kind point. Focus your attention during the week prior to the wedding on taking care of your out-of-town guests. Planning welcome baskets for hotel rooms and day after brunches can take your mind off of those wedding aspects with which you don't agree. In regards to your out-of-town guests it's best to keep your opinions to yourself again. You don't want people pitying the bride on her wedding day because of the mess she is getting into with her future mother-in-law. Believe me the overlooked details you are dying to dish about will be very obvious to your guests. Better to take the high road on this one. As this final week comes and goes, try to think of ways to improve your relationship with your son's betrothed. If you already have a good relationship, stay out of the way so that you don't cause any last-minute tensions. If you don't have a good relationship, I suggest writing your daughter-in-law a letter wishing her the best and assuring her that you are glad she will be a part of your family even if you aren't. Respecting your son and his bride are the most important gifts you can give them at their wedding. What is antisocial behavior? Antisocial behavior, ASB, is any activity that impacts on other people in a negative way. Antisocial behavior remains a serious issue in the UK with around 66,000 reports of ASB made to authorities each day. Source, One Day Count of Antisocial Behavior, September 10, 2003. What is ASB? Antisocial behavior includes a variety of behavior covering a whole complex of selfish and unacceptable activity that can blight the quality of community life. Examples include, nuisance neighbors, rowdy and nuisance behavior, yobbish behavior and intimidating groups taking over public spaces, vandalism, graffiti and fly posting, people dealing and buying drugs on the street, people dumping rubbish and abandoning cars, begging and antisocial drinking. The misuse of fireworks. Antisocial behavior doesn't just make life unpleasant. It holds back the regeneration of disadvantaged areas and creates an environment where more serious crime can take hold. On any measure of polling or survey antisocial behavior matters it has a negative effect on far too many people's quality of life. The Antisocial Behavior Act applies only to England and Wales. There are similar but separate measures in force in Scotland and Northern Ireland. What's an ASBO? An antisocial behavior order, ASBO, T, prevents those people responsible from carrying out an antisocial act or series of antisocial behavior. ASBOs are designed to stop unacceptable and antisocial behavior and prevent members of the public being targeted further by such acts. The ASBO in theory prevents the person responsible from being present in specific areas in local communities known as exclusion zones. 
How are they imposed? ASBOs are imposed by magistrates' courts after an application by a case officer who is usually an employee of the local council. The case officer has to tell the court details such as the people and incidents involved and the restrictions of the proposed ASBO. The court will also hear about welfare issues, family circumstances attempts at mediation and warnings and evidence that the defendant has not been victimized or discriminated against. The court then decides what prohibitions to apply. An ASBO has to last for at least two years but can be indefinite. It must be reasonable and proportionate and realistically practical. ASBOs don't need to only refer to criminal acts but can prohibit actions which, although not criminal themselves, would be necessary steps before a criminal act such as a ban on entering a shop rather than on shoplifting. Appeals against ASBOs can be made to a Crown Court. What happens when they're breached? Breaching an ASBO is a criminal offence for which a defendant can be arrested. The police investigate breaches and can obtain information from any source including housing and other local authority offices, neighbors and members of the public. Usually breach of an ASBO will result in prosecution and a court appearance. Using parents to tackle ASB A proposal to tackle antisocial behavior by forcing more parents to attend parenting classes are set to be published. The moves may even be extended to parents whose children have been responsible for antisocial behavior rather than crimes. An alternative to such orders would be to do nothing about such families with a future cost to society including thousands of pounds in court and social care fees. Critics of antisocial behavior. One theory is that antisocial behavior in some children could be the result of their genetic makeup and hence giving them an ASBO is not fair or just as they just can't help it. Other critics of the ASBO system argue that it criminalizes behavior that's otherwise lawful. Other parties have voiced concerns about the open-ended nature of ASBO penalties that there is little restriction on what a court may impose as the terms of the ASBO and little restriction on what can be designated as antisocial behavior. Many youths have been parading the ASBOs as a badge of honor within their own gangs and communities. What's a proper wedding gift? How to decide on what you should give? There is no right and wrong rule to this since every couple is different as is every wedding guest's budget. What's well received and appreciated by one couple may horrify another. If you are having trouble deciding on what would be a proper wedding gift here are some questions to consider to help guide you in your gift selection. Less than be greater than what are the bride and groom's personalities like? Less than be greater than are they a fun-loving couple? Are they eccentric? Are they very conservative? By answering such questions you should be better able to search for gift ideas that will suit their personalities and therefore be happily received. Less than be greater than what hobbies and interests do they have? Less than be greater than choose gifts that will enhance the enjoyment of their interests. For example, some couples love bowling together. Search for a gift that's related to this sport such as matching personalized bowling hats. Less than be greater than what type of food do they both love? Less than be greater than if they love Italian food then a gift certificate to a romantic Italian restaurant would be appropriate. Another idea is to put together or purchase an Italian food gift basket for a romantic picnic. If they're the type of couple that loves barbecued foods a gift basket full of barbecue sauces, recipes and spices would be a welcomed wedding present. Less than be greater than how is their home decorated? Less than be greater than for those who know the couple well and have been in their home you may want to look for something that will complement their decor such as a special figurine, a picture or a collectible. Do they have a gift registry set up? If so you can choose something that you know they're guaranteed to like. Gift a gift of money. If you still can't decide then send a check equal to what you would have spent on a wedding present. Make it out to Mr. and Mrs. whatever unless the bride is keeping her maiden name in which case use both names on the check. Wedding traditions from around the world explained in many cases a marriage is recognized both by a church and the state. While the legal requirements for a wedding are established by the state many couple wish to follow certain religious traditions to have their marriage recognized in their church as well. In the Catholic religion marriage is considered sacred and is one of the sacraments of the faith. The Catholic Church puts forth their own requirements for a marriage to be recognized in the eyes of the Church. One of the most important aspects of a Catholic wedding is the location. Many couples may wish to be married in an outdoor ceremony but it's important to realize that an outdoor wedding would not be recognized by the Catholic Church. 
the purpose of holding your wedding ceremony is to demonstrate that you are seeking God's blessing and influence in your marriage. For this reason the Catholic Church does not recognize any marriage ceremonies that are held outside of a church. While you will still be legally married in accordance with all state guidelines your marriage will not be recognized by the church. A Catholic wedding does not have to include a mass as part of the wedding. The church will recognize a union that is performed in a church and by a priest without the full mass. Many couples will opt for a full mass to have the opportunity to receive additional blessings during their wedding. A wedding that includes a full mass can be slightly over an hour long in terms of length. A wedding that does not include a mass can be approximately 20 minutes long and usually includes readings, hymns and psalms as well as blessings from the priest but doesn't include a celebration of the Eucharist. Yet another final superstition relates to offering well wishes to the bride. At a traditional Irish wedding it's considered bad luck for a woman to be the first one to congratulate the bride and wish her well. For this reason a close friend or relative of the groom will also take it upon himself to ensure that he's the first to congratulate the bride. A traditional Irish wedding usually concludes with a toast that has been recited for many years. At the end of the reception the guests will gather around the couple for the final toast. The couple will begin the toast by saying friends and relatives so fond and dear tease our greatest pleasure to have you here. When many years this day has passed fondest memories will always last. So we drink a cup of Irish mead and ask God's blessing in your hour of need. One additional tradition of the Catholic Church is requiring the couple to attend premarital counseling sessions, sometimes called pre cania These are extremely worthwhile because they give the couple the forum for talking about various serious issues. This time-honored tradition of the Catholic Church goes a long way in ensuring that the couple is right for each other and that their marriage will last. These sessions are usually hosted by a priest and can also include young married couples who testify to the joys and tribulations of marriage. These can be either individual or group sessions and include weekly or monthly sessions or maybe one intensive weekend of counseling. Of course no traditional Irish wedding complete without the presence of bagpipes and kilts. It's customary for friends and family members to bring along their bagpipes and pipe the couple into the mass and into the reception. They may also continue to charm the guests with an assortment of bagpipe tunes suitable for dancing. Not only do friends and family members enjoy performing for the couple and the other guests but they also enjoy taking the opportunity to dress in traditional kilts for the occasion. The look and sound of the bagpipers creates the feel of a truly traditional Irish wedding. In order for a marriage to be recognized by the Catholic Church it is important to adhere to certain traditions. These traditions include location music selections seeking annulments for previous marriages and participating in church-sanctioned counseling sessions. Wedding video. A video presentation of your wedding can become the most entertaining memory of your wedding day. It's a crucial part of your wedding and you should treat it accordingly. You've many options to have your wedding videographed. You can have a friend or family do it for you or you can hire a professional. If you hire a professional you need to consider several issues. You need to make sure you are hiring an experienced person. You should view their previous work and ask for sample footage. On the demo you want to look for clarity and an overall feel for the work. The steadiness of the camera is another point to consider. Make sure you understand what's included in the final product you are purchasing. Is it a DVD? What's the expected duration of the video? How many cameras are used to produce the movie? Ask to see if you can include photos and other video footage. Make sure you can select the music you want. Will they provide you with the raw footage so you can later edit it yourself? It's best if the videographer is familiar with the wedding ceremony and reception venue. Ask to see if they're willing to visit the location prior to the wedding to become familiar with the place. The visit should give the person clues about angles, lighting and other important factors. Be sure the videographer understands the schedule of your wedding. Explain to them the most important aspect to the wedding. They've to understand what is the most important to you. Perhaps there are certain people or places that you want him to emphasize. The more they understand what you are looking for in the video the better they're equipped to make the most memorable product for you. Your wedding is a once in a lifetime experience so do everything you can to preserve the moment. Wedding tips and advice. You've waited for it, you've imagined it, you've planned it, your wedding day. 
The day when everything should be perfect and nothing should go wrong but you fear for the worst and you are so worried not to miss something that you may actually forget to enjoy the day. Here are some tips that may help you put everything in order. The most important is to choose the date, to establish a budget and to try to stick to it. Do have an available marriage license for that day. Book in advance the church and the party site. Take your time to compare prices and offers and don't be shy, try to negotiate. You and your partner will want to look astonishing on your big day but remember that the suit, the wedding dress and the shoes should also be comfortable. And make sure you also have the rest of brides and bridegrooms attire. Check carefully the guest list and make sure that everybody's got an invitation. If you have some small children in your family nieces, nephews, cousins appoint them as flower girl and ring bearer. Don't forget to choose the opening dance it would be better to practice it a bit before everybody will be watching you. Talk with the band DJ about what are they planning to play. The music should be as various as possible to meet almost everyone's requirements. Talk to the photographer to take pictures with all your guests not only with the family and to catch unique and funny moments they will make you smile later. The vow moment is quite emotional. Practice your vows in front of a mirror just to make sure you won't get nervous when the moment comes. Choose carefully the flowers for the bride's bouquet. They have to match with the colors of the bride's gown and the groom's suit. If you want to, you may give some small gifts to the guests a picture of the lucky couple with a funny massage or a classical thanks for coming. A deco object. A piece from the wedding cake. And most importantly don't forget to smile and be happy. Wedding speeches. A quick outline. Wedding speeches are reserved for the most important members of the wedding party and closest family and friends. If you are one of the ones expected or asked to do a wedding speech then preparing is a must. Winging it just won't cut it especially when your wedding speech will be on video from now until eternity. Wedding speeches should not last more than three or four minutes. It reminds me of that famous quote by John F. Kennedy, public speaking is the art of diluting a two-minute idea with a two-hour vocabulary. It's actually much harder to do a short wedding speech than a long one which reminds me of another quote, it usually takes me more than three weeks to prepare a good impromptu speech. Mark Twain. You to have an opening and closing. You probably want to throw in a story and at least one piece of humor. And it all has to make sense. Please, please, please don't apologize for how bad you are as soon as you stand up. Which reminds me of yet another quote by Kin Hubbard, why doesn't the fellow who says I'm no speechmaker, let it go at that instead of giving a demonstration. Ha 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 I love that one. Here's a quick outline for a wedding speech. Note, each one of the bullet points below could have many variations. Opening could be comments about the lovely affair. Comments about the bride and groom. Story about your interactions with the bride, groom or both. Humor pick something that applies to them and is appropriate. Closing something touching toast brief and touching or funny. You'll rarely be the hit of a wedding because of your wedding speech 5 rightfully sir. The bride and groom are the stars. But poor preparation of your wedding speech certainly could make you the laughing stock. Remember you are going to perform your wedding speech live but you'll be on video forever. Take the time to prepare. What is a male friend? Male friends are people who want new real-world experiences with real people who have different cultures, attitudes, ages, beliefs and views. They value diversity in age, color, race, belief and views and bell of this is of paramount importance to real male friends. They accept that the real world is a challenging place and that they don't all share the same passions and beliefs, but they don't judge people just because they're different. One of the key purposes of coming together as a community is to learn and understand what their differences are so that they can develop more as individuals. The worldwide community of male friends is a place where open-minded people challenge rather than just accept, not through hatred or disdain but through intellectual curiosity. They believe that real friends challenge us to help us develop and that this quickly turns to supporting other male friends when they have a problem. They use their own experiences to help people no matter where they're or what their situations may be. Respect for people's lives and their right to have a life that is free from intolerance, persecution, abuse and hatred is at the core of their beliefs. They welcome open discussions on important topics and don't shy away from dealing with hard issues. They don't bow down to political correctness but neither do they tolerate hatred, racism, sexism, harassment, obscenity, threatening behavior and respect each other's right to privacy at all times. Likewise, 
They don't shy away from talking about the obscure, fun, ridiculous, frivolous and sometimes downright stupid things that we all see and experience around us. They enjoy sharing their lives and experiences through interactions with other male friends even if these interactions sometimes make them feel uncomfortable. Male Friends is above all a community where people enjoy and experience the real world through conversations with people from every corner of the world. What are the most popular wedding favors? The last thing a bridal couple should need to worry about is the type of wedding favors to have when there are so many other decisions looming on their shoulders. But sticking with perennial favorites such as candles, soaps, personalized trinkets and wedding cameras can make the wedding favor selection relatively painless. There are many different varieties of candles given as wedding favors and the possibilities can seem endless. The candles can be very small as of the tea light variety or a little larger in the votive size or even much larger in a pillar size. They can be any color such as a formal white, soft pastel colors or any other color to match the bridal party color scheme. Sometimes the candles are in unique shapes such as a heart, bridal gown, champagne glass, wedding cake or flowers. Along the same lines, soaps can also make unique wedding favors and they're available in many different varieties, colors and sizes. They're commonly in the shape of hearts or flowers and are mostly in pastel colors such as yellow, pink and blue. In addition they can take on different forms such as bath salts, bath confetti, or bath fizz. These are versatile enough to also make great favors for a bridal shower, especially one marked as a personal shower. For a more personal touch there are many different trinkets than can be personalized with the bridal couple's names and or wedding date. These can be as simple as tags or ribbons that are added onto other items such as flowers or candies or as different as tea tins and packets of cappuccino. Some of the most common personalized favors are vases, photo frames and candle holders. Of course you don't want to leave men out of this. Golf tees and matchbooks can be personalized as well. And don't forget the napkins to wrap the wedding cake in. Another very popular option is that of wedding cameras. One or two of these are usually placed at each table. The guests can then use them at their discretion to take pictures during dinner or of each other dancing, freeing up the photographer to take portraits. At the end of the evening the bridal couple gathers up all the cameras to get them developed. The cameras can be bought in bulk and can have a variety of different designs on them from flowers, to beach to printed love poems. They can also be personalized just like any other favor. Candles, soaps, personalized trinkets and wedding cameras are some of the most common wedding favors but there are many other ideas as well to make every wedding personalized to the individual couple. This is a time to make everything as special as can be and wedding favors make it just that much more so. Wedding slideshow productions. Wedding slideshows are being shown at almost every wedding across America. Parents are having them made for their children, married couples are having them made for themselves, best men and maid of honors are having them made for the happy couple, and the list goes on. What are some of the reasons people are having these slideshows, video albums, photo montages made, and where exactly do they fit into the wedding ceremony? Slideshows for weddings can be shown at rehearsal dinners, the reception or both. Slideshows for rehearsal dinners can be very personal and should also include those in the wedding party as to make the slideshow more entertaining to the audience. Slideshows for receptions are often shown while the bride and groom are still having their pictures taken. In this way, your guests are being entertained while awaiting the arrival of the new Mr. and Mrs. However the most popular time to present the slideshow is during the meal or immediately following the last person served. In this way your guests are being entertained while dining and this takes the stress off of having to come up with small talk for an extended amount of time. Just a continuous flow of pictures throughout the evening to give the guests something to look and to help keep the conversation between guests going pictures have a way of creating conversational topics. This is good to do when there are no creative elements in the slideshow presentation just the fade in fade out photo montage style slideshow. But for a more creative slideshow presentation you should opt to show the slideshow continuously throughout the evening only after having shown the slideshow completely through with the sound when the slideshow is finished just turn off the sound and let the show play in a continuous loop. But make sure you tell your slideshow creating company that this is what you want to do. The wedding slideshow should consist of photos of both the bride and the groom from the time of birth through the engagement. In addition when creating the slideshow make sure to include photos of the guests when possible. 
This will most assuredly help keep your audience's interest peaked. Another feature you would most definitely want to include in the slideshow is credits. Give credit to mothers, fathers, grandparents, the bridal party and anyone else who helped to make this the most memorable occasion of your life. Presenting slideshows at the reception is a wonderful way to display your relationship to all your family and friends. It will be especially meaningful to your out-of-town guests because it will help them get to know the new love of your life how you met and the joy you bring each other. Once you've selected the photographs for your wedding slideshow production contact a professional slideshow creating company such as Sands of Time Multimedia Creations. Professional slideshow companies are experts at creating the best slideshow for your special occasion and have all the equipment necessary to create a professional quality DVD or VHS. But don't make the mistake of putting this off until the last minute. Creating professional slideshows takes time and so does the mail. So get started gathering up your photos as soon as possible and call Sands of Time Multimedia Creations the professional wedding slideshow creating company for creating the best slideshows possible to make your occasion and wedding reception and rehearsal dinner everyone all be talking about four years to come. And don't forget to order slideshow copies to give to the parents, grandparents and other close family members and friends. Wedding week. I dos and I don't for the groom. While planning a wedding can leave one harrowed by the big day there are some strategies both brides and grooms can use to make events go as smoothly as possible. Common sense needs to rule the day no matter what goes wrong and rest assured all won't go exactly as planned. If both brides and grooms are on board with making the wedding day go as smoothly as possible even the mishaps can be seen as favorite memories in the days and years to come. In most situations brides have planned most of the wedding. This fact does not mean, however that the groom can just sit back and watch while the bride works herself into a frenzy by the wedding day. If you as a groom don't know what to do to help just ask. Ask your bride for a list of things that you can do to help her. If she says she'll handle it all herself it may be time to put in a call to her mother. Those extra brownie points never hurt anyway. If you are the recipient of a to-do list, just do it. Even if the items don't seem important to you, complete the list in its entirety on time. If we look at the traditional role for the groom in planning a wedding we'll see that the groom is usually responsible for planning the honeymoon. If this is the case for you make sure to confirm every single reservation you've made for the trip. If you don't know what you need ask for help. If the bride is too busy ask a female friend or your own mother. Everything needs to be done before the day of the wedding. If nothing else it will start you marriage out on the right foot. An important responsibility for the groom before the wedding is purchasing a gift for your bride. Make sure this gift along with the ring and all honeymoon documents is packed in a secure place. Write the location down on your hand if you have to, just don't forget where you put these necessities. During the rehearsal dinner make sure you give a toast to your future in-laws. Again the brownie points. Tell them how wonderful they must be in order to raise such a wonderful daughter, etc. Don't forget your own parents in the toast either. Be sure to thank them for all they've done for you. A key point of advice is to severely limit if not curtail altogether consuming alcoholic beverages the day before and the day of the wedding. Being respectful to your bride family and guests is extremely important. You don't want your guests feeling sorry for your bride for marrying an inconsiderate lush on the day of the wedding be to the church exactly as scheduled. Photographers usually start taking pictures two hours before the ceremony. The photographer will photograph the bride for about 45 minutes and the groom for about 30 minutes. Even if you think you'll just be sitting around which may happen be there on time anyway. Now would be a good time to get in a last game of poker with your buddies before getting married if you find yourself with nothing to do. Truly, the groom's responsibilities for the week of the wedding can be summed up in one word, courtesy. Show courtesy to your bride by being available to assist her any way you can. Show courtesy to your family by remembering them in toasts. Show courtesy to your guests by being on your best behavior. Finally show courtesy to yourself. You will have to live with every decision you make during the week and day of your wedding. Be the kind of person you would want your daughter to marry someday. Wedding stationery a formal statement or tradition. Of all the things needed to do when planning a wedding, if you forget to invite the guests it won't be much of a celebration. 
Even in this high-tech age of instant communication a wedding is not something that has translated well to the email or voicemail notification. Even the most radical wedding ceremony still requires wedding stationery just to stay recognized as decent people. Wedding stationery is simply the specialized, printed paper goods for your wedding. This can include invitations, thank you notes, all the envelopes, RSVP cards, formal writing paper, even napkins and coordinated note cards and name tags. The two most important pieces of wedding stationery, however, are the invitations and the thank you cards. Many family and friend relationships have been damaged over who was invited to a wedding, what was purchased as a gift, and if that gift was acknowledged with a formal thank you. A marriage is not the time to make a statement and care must be taken not to leave anyone out that should receive a wedding invitation. Be certain to check with family members and especially parents of both the bride and groom. Parents can offer a surprising number of people to a wedding celebration that could be offended if not invited. Many people who you invite will usually be people that may not even attend. Even if you know they can't attend due to living out of state etc. it's still important to invite them. An invitation shows consideration for that friend or family member. It also gives them the option to send a gift. Thank you cards also are critical as every gift must be acknowledged. It's considered quite crass and rude not to send through postal mail, a handwritten personal thank you for any gift received. A good thank you note would acknowledge the gift specifically by name is handwritten and hand addressed. This says a lot about you as a couple and should not be minimized. Sending email, leaving voicemail, even thanking the gift giver personally by telephone doesn't remove the obligation of a formal written thank you. Wedding stationery is usually printed with specific information about the marriage date, people involved etc. Because of this customization you'll need shop around and select the stationery well in advance of your wedding. Wedding stationery and invitations are not something to leave for the last minute. It will take some time to decide just the right paper, layout and font for your stationery. Your wedding invitation and accessories set the tone for your special day firmly establishing your style and taste. It's the first official message about your wedding that a guest will receive from you so make it special. If wedding etiquette is important to you, then make a start with your wedding stationery. Wedding reception lessons to learn. After the wedding ceremony is carried out everyone that needs to has said their I do's, the confetti has been thrown and the carriage arrives to take the bride and groom away, the bride and groom head of to the wedding reception to meet the guests of course the guests from the ceremony are all going but some people only attend the reception. The ceremony is more for family than friends. So once you arrive at the reception what happens then? A party. The wedding reception is where the entertainment and the food is no doubt the newlyweds will be starving after the nerves and the shock of getting married has worn of. The reception is a great time for friends and family to get to know each other as well they are all one big circle of family and need to get along for your sake. The wedding reception then starts of with a speech a toast, some food and then the entertainment. The food can either be hot plate served or it can be hot and cold buffet style dinner whatever you choose is loved by all guests, no doubt the happily married couple will be starving after the shock of marriage and the release of the nerves. After everyone has eaten and admired their wedding favors and the special gifts have been handed out to the members of the guests that have played a special part in the wedding the entertainment starts. The entertainment is usually a DJ or a live band sometimes though couples get really creative and go for a magician or even a comedian. Keeping the guests entertained is a great part of the wedding as it makes you feel good to know that everything that you have done has made all these people happy. The wedding reception is the most favorable part of any wedding. The ceremony is usually boring and the guests are glad to get off to the reception to have a good time. The wedding reception is another type of celebration of your marriage. The next celebration which is undoubtedly the best is the honeymoon which you will no doubt enjoy thoroughly. Wedding reception events. The wedding ceremony is finally over and the last picture at the ceremony site has finally been taken. It's time to celebrate. The reception is often the aspect of the wedding that receives the most planning. It's also the aspect that receives most of the budget. Below is a short guide to the events at the reception. For more great reception ideas, be sure to visit www.bradalblog.info. Usually while the wedding party is taking pictures the guests head over to the reception site. 
if there is going to be a sit-down dinner and the budget allows, it's very thoughtful and a wonderful idea to have some drinks and hors d'oeuvre waiting for your guests to enjoy. Depending on the photographer, this waiting period can be up to an hour. In addition to enjoying some refreshments guests can also sign the guest book and leave gifts on a designated table. If the reception is buffet in style, many brides and groom opt to allow guests to eat before the couple arrives at the reception. The only issue I have with this practice is that people will often leave before the bride and groom arrive. If you don't want to open the buffet before your arrival again the beverages and hors d'oeuvre are a good idea. When the bridal party arrives the DJ or other speaker announces the grand entrance. The wedding party comes in first and the newlyweds come in last. Everyone's name is announced. If desired the relationship to the couple may be stated as well. There are still some couples who want to have a receiving line so that they will see all of those who came to help them celebrate. If you would like to have a receiving line, do so as soon as you arrive. Again, if you don't have the receiving line as soon as you arrive, people will leave. Once everyone is at the reception, toasts are made. The traditional toasters are the best man and parents of the bride and groom. This is the parents' opportunity to formally thank all of their guests for coming. The saint dances are a tradition that endures to this day. Usually the husband and wife start off the dancing and number one else dances before them. In addition to the newlyweds the bride and her father as well as the groom and his mother often share a dance. And other traditions at receptions are cutting the cake and tossing the bouquet and garter. The couple would be wise to discuss covering each other's faces in cake versus making a clean exchange before the wedding. Even with this discussion, beware. The final event of the reception is the final dance. After the final dance, the bride and groom leave the reception. The guests shortly follow and then the parents all collapse in a big heap. It has been a long day but didn't we all have fun? Wedding planner tips, how a wedding planner can make your life easier. Many people plan their weddings with their family and friends and partner but some people who can afford to splash their cash hire a wedding planner. If you've seen the film Wedding Planner that doesn't always happen trust me you need not be worried about your husband running away with the wedding planner. A wedding planner's job is to basically help you take the weight of the wedding of your shoulders and take the brunt of it on theirs, they do most of the organizing you just do the choosing. They are there to help make your day even more special and make you pay quite a bit more. But does a wedding planner really make a difference in a wedding? Do they make it all that more organized? Do they really add that missing touch? The truth is no, yes they help you with the organizing but it's like someone else takes over your special day you don't have a lot of say in things and things just seem to take heed with you standing back and watching your wedding planner make all the decisions. Sometimes you get a wedding planner that's great and you get on well but other ones are like the devil let loose and rain on your parade. Wedding planners are usually women or eccentric men who maybe have one of the best jobs in the world. They've control and organizational skills and know how to make things work but it does not always suit the bride and the groom often a wedding planner's own tastes come into play and that then takes the special feelings and unique moments out of planning a wedding. I say the best thing that you can do is stick together with the support of your friends and family and muddle through with the wedding plans they may not the best organized or the fanciest but they're yours and your partner's moments together leading up to your big day. The last chance you'll have to spend as an unofficial couple as in the next few months you'll be married and then there is no going back. Wedding plans. Getting down to business in the honeymoon suite. Wedding plans are similar to that of a business venture in what way you ask well usually there's a partner involved then the initial expense outlay followed by commitment and last but not least the most important part of the deal is to have success on the day and for the future. Your wedding day without doubt is going to be one of the most special days in both you and your partner's life so it's important to let wisdom take center stage when drawing up your wedding plan list e.g. learn by others mistakes. Mistakes like going over the budget clashing of colors with the bridal gown even wrong choice of venue or flowers can spoil the day. After the date has been finalized for your wedding make sure that you remember to prioritize your wedding plans to do list by having your future husband wife at your side when making decisions by doing this any likes or dislikes from both parties can be amicably solved therefore preventing any arguments before the ring is on the finger. Cost-effective weddings are just as special as costly ones so if you are on a budget stick to it to save any heartache further down the line when the pennies are much more appreciated in running the marital home. 
The build-up to the big day can prove to be very stressful and it doesn't have to be if your wedding plans have been carefully detailed out and scrutinized over and over again so that no stone has been left unturned last-minute hitches can cause so much sorrow. Why not call on close friends and family for some advice regarding your wedding plans? This can prove to be very helpful as well as receiving fresh tips 5 ideas from people who want the best for you and partner. To make your wedding day unique in a cost-effective way then do everything yourself. Either you or someone you know or that they know will be handy with a needle and cotton. Remember word of mouth will bring results as well as a bridal gown just ask. If by chance you have a talent like sculpturing water garden features etc try advertising in a local newspaper your product in return for the services of a seamstress. If weather permitting take your wedding vows in the garden check that the vicar is available decorate accordingly as this location can be used for the reception venue. Ask a friend for the use of their garden if you find yours is too small to accommodate the wedding guests invited. White weddings in cooler months then hire a marquee. A running buffet is a suitable way of filling the guest back quote s belly attending an outdoor wedding ceremony. The wedding cake how are your baking skills in the kitchen don't fret. Sponge cake mixes are there for the taking borrow a good recipe book from the library on how to pipe cream your confectionery. Practice makes perfect have a few dummy runs in the scullery. Not confident enough to take on the task then spread the word. Look for discount sales on wedding bands rings don't have to be gold. Photographs everyone has a camera so finding a photographer should not be difficult. Crap snaps are definitely out of the question so check out the quality of the photographer's previous wedding shots. Flowers can be picked from the garden or open fields. If you feel the need to add to the handheld wedding accessory then a trail of ribbons can enhance the bouquet. The headdress can be a crown of flowers to complement the bridal posy. The options are endless for making your wedding day special planning is the key to success. Walk to the church on a fine spring, summer's day. It may sound unusual but unique thus saving on wedding cars and good for the environment pollution from exhaust fumes. Weddings are very similar to that of a business where in time you retire just like the happy couple as man and wife to the honeymoon suite to get down to business. Wedding photographer hiring the right photographer is among the most important tasks you have while planning your wedding. Many photographers specialize in weddings. Of course, you may end up with a photographer that has no wedding experience but has a much more affordable price. It's essential that you view the photographer's previous work. Ask to see all the photos from a few recent weddings. It's important to view most photographs from a wedding to get a feel for what kind of photographs to expect. It's easy to show you a few very nice photos but it doesn't tell you what the majority of the pictures will look like. Always ask for references and be sure to actually check the references. If the photographer is hesitant to provide you with references, it's time to walk. If your photographer is unfamiliar with your wedding ceremony and reception location make sure he familiarizes himself with the place. You want him to be ready with great ideas about the best possible shots of the place. You want your wedding album to be filled with pictures that make you proud of your wedding day. Therefore, it's imperative that you find a photographer you feel comfortable with. Don't settle on hiring the first photographer you interview. Plan on speaking with several of them before you make a decision. Take recommendations from friends and family but don't automatically hire a photographer simply because someone recommended him to you. Bridal fairs professional wedding professional associations, wedding planners are great resources for finding photographers. Wedding photography is one of the most expensive service professional you'll hire for your wedding. Make sure you set enough time to take pictures so he's not rushed. The majority of wedding photographers get much of their business by brides recommending them and the ones that don't get word of mouth referrals are soon out of business. Wedding plans. How do you choose the entertainment as with anything else? Wedding entertainment is a minefield. There are one thousands of wedding DJs, bands, magicians and singers alike out there waiting, eagerly to take your money for a service that could be either fantastic or not so good. The key is this, thorough research. With this particular product, you can't always see what you are buying until you've actually bought it. You can't easily see the full product range as there are so many types out there. And when you've finally found something you like, can you it, and will it be reliable enough to show for the biggest day of your life? 
Here are a few simple measures you must take when researching and booking your wedding entertainment. S. Use the internet. You will find some of the largest directories for entertainers this way. Browse various websites for bands and singers. Use various search methods and phrases such as London Wedding Singer or Wedding Entertainment in Liverpool paying attention to sponsored ads that highlight your chosen phrase take your pick. Once you've found something you like the look of you'll want to find as much information on this service as you can, even before the contact stage. For example if it's a band do they have online demos, images, testimonials, you want to be at least semi-sure before you hand over an email address. Narrow it down to say, your favorite five bands, before you start any contact. Obtain a quote and availability. Money is always an option for most of us. I wouldn't want to spend half of my wedding budget on a band or singer no matter how good they're, so I'd be on the lookout for realistic pricing. You don't want to book someone who is overly expensive but you also don't want to pay 200 for a singer who will tell you yeah, I'll sing for you and I'm also a DJ. When you first contact the entertainers, you would first inquire about availability for the date in question, then a price. Also how long will your entertainer perform for? Performance times can vary, though most singers and bands perform for 1 or 2x 45 minute sets, depending on their pricing structure. More information, if you can, get more information about their service. Can you visit them live? Do they've more demos? A repertoire. It's always good to meet up and discuss things in person this way you'll get a feel for who they are and what they do. Book and secure this of course is the most crucial part. Most bands, singers will take a deposit booking fee anything up to 50% is normal so you must be completely sure of your choice at this stage. It's always wise to obtain an invoice, receipt and most importantly a contract of agreement. This way you can be 99% sure that they will be turning up on the day and if they don't tea, you've the necessary means to be compensated in full. By this stage you are well on your way to having an unforgettable evening. You can then use the remaining time before your wedding day to liaise with the DJ, singers, band etc. giving them your first dance, requests, schedule and any other information they may require. Organizing wedding entertainment can be very stressful, even on the day but if you make the right choices early and are prepared to research and book in advance, you'll save yourself and your partner at least one set of wedding worries. Wedding plans. Can you really organize a wedding using the internet? Think of any business name or any service you know of. Now open a web page to a search engine and type in what you came up with. Voila. A million results and most probably if you typed a business name the business website. For example I love jelly beans. I also obsess about buying a plasma TV. So I'm going to do two product searches. For a business search, I'll randomly select a business from the yellow pages and search for it by typing the business name. I'll now perform three searches, 1. Jelly Beans 2. Plasma TV 3. Randomly selected business name OK here were my results, 1. The Jelly Bean search brought me 10,200,000 results. Of course I was bored after the first page but I found what I was looking for the official Jelly Belly website. There were other various suppliers listed in the sponsored links along the top and right hand side, some selling the original Jelly Belly Jelly Beans. I looked at them all to compare prices. 2. The Plasma TV search brought me 76,100,000 results. The first page consisted of the major high street stores, comparison website links and a few manufacturer website links. If I had searched 32 Plasma TV the results would have been more specific. 3. I performed 5 business name searches. 4 of the 5 names searched produced results in the top 10 listings and 3 of the 5 names searched produced sponsored links for that company. Results. Any business owner with half a brain will list their information in some form on the internet. So now we know. Everyone is on the internet nothing new really. But to answer the big question of can you really organize a wedding using the internet? I would have to say yes. I know this because I'm doing it myself. I'm getting married next year and I'm making a search of sourcing all of my information from the internet. There are so many companies out there it's unbelievable. The wedding business is still big and everyone wants to make money off you which is why you must seriously shop around before making any choices. Here is an example. 
I myself work as a wedding singer, my fiancé is a wedding DJ, so we both know a fair bit about the business. My fiancé has seen her share of bad singers and bands. I have worked with more cheesy DJs than I care to remember. The last thing either of us want for our evening reception is bad entertainment. What we do is this. 1. Type in key phrases through a search engine like wedding bands in North Wales or wedding DJ in Chester. We do this a number of times with different key phrases as we may get varied results each time. We look at the sponsored links as they will pick up on the key phrases. 2. Visit websites listen to audio samples and log the results in a database. 3. Contact the various entertainers for availability, prices, audio samples and repertoire. I personally do this by email as I don't like to be hassled afterwards. 4. When we've narrowed it down to a few we'll see if we can watch them in action or at least get some more info on them from another source, i.e. references or reviews. And then we're satisfied. This sounds like a lot of work but I always think it's better to be thorough. You are always going to be taking a chance whether booking online or in a shop, but you'll get a lot less fed up flicking through internet pages than you'll carting yourself around shops all day. Recently I've been looking for a photographer. I've found so many that are charging 800 plus, another lot that want around 500 and few that will do it for 300 to 400. Everyone naturally thinks that the photographers who charge 300 to 400 will surely not be as experienced as the ones asking 4,800 plus. I don't think that this is the case. There will be a percentage that can do a fantastic job and only charge 300. Same will go for the other two categories. The motive for charging large fees is this, they can. I don't believe that it necessarily reflects their service so much as it does their business sense. When we come to choose a photographer we want to be sure that we have looked at all of the options and then use our judgment to make the choice. Using the internet you can look at many more options than if you were browsing the high street or the yellow pages directory. Plus you'll save a packet which means more money for the honeymoon. Wedding reception music. Top tips on making your evening wedding party unforgettable. Live music means involvement. A group of wedding guests usually comprises of two separate family groups that are only just beginning to get to know each other. Even within each family there will perhaps be members who seldom see each other. The bride and groom will probably have separate sets of friends that have not yet had a chance to become really intimate. There's number two ways about it. In such a situation live music is an excellent icebreaker. A tremendous party involves a great shared release of energy. To complete your special day in an unforgettable way, you'll want everyone on the dance floor, laughing and dancing. Live music, center stage. The guys on the stage are going to lead your party. No matter what the style of music an infectious sense of fun is an essential ingredient in getting a party going. If the band is having fun on stage so will you on the dance floor. You need a band that wants to party as much as you do. As in any human situation, a happy band of musicians is a well-looked-after one. Carefully think through the logistics of the event beforehand. As a rule of thumb, the larger the band, the longer the setup time. A six-piece pop band with a lighting rig can take up to two hours or more to set up. Make sure the band have enough time to get their equipment in position. If the band has to set up early and then wait while the wedding breakfast takes place make sure that you provide a comfortable place for them to go and that they too have some refreshments a plate of sandwiches and some drinks will usually suffice. Including perhaps an hour or two's traveling to five from the gig, then the setup and breakdown, a wedding performance is a long day for the band. To get the very best from them at this important time for you it's in your interest to make sure they're comfortable and well cared for. Let your hair down and boogie so which way do you want to party the night away? There are lots of options. Hot rhythm is the key to getting everyone out of their seats. Evoke Hollywood glitz and glamour with swing jazz, Sinatra style. A steel band gets the party going with a Caribbean holiday feel. Samba the night away with Brazilian style Latin jazz. Jump and jive with Arnab and Boogie Woogie, a la Jules Holland. Get into a really funky groove with a soul, disco, funk band. Everyone enjoys the pop classics of the last five decades. Or you could settle for a traditional Irish-style family Kaylee. The list is endless. Wedding planning choosing the gown. The dress is always the highlight of all wedding fantasies and make-believes. 
Ever since their youth people will most often dream of a beautiful princess bride in a snowy white ethereal wedding dress of stunning beauty. It comes as no surprise that choosing the perfect wedding dress for your wedding will prove to be one of the most challenging and exciting part of planning your wedding. Marriage is ideally an once-in-a-lifetime event. There isn't much leeway to practice or make mistakes. So to make the bride's entrance down the carpet perfect and memorable, one must take great pains to ensure that everything is done correctly down to every little detail on the wedding dress. From watching fantasy-like weddings on TV or reading about them in books and magazines or hearing about them from other people many brides-to-be form an image in their minds of the kind of wedding dress they would like to wear on their wedding. Many people take a watch and learn stance as they formulate plan and dream up their ideal wedding dress. If your time has come and you are shopping for the perfect dress to make your wedding dreams come true, then you've come to the right place. Here are a few tips to help you get over the wedding dress hump or less sweat. 1. The dress comes first. Although it may go both ways, the theme of your dress should follow your desired theme or vice versa. Some couples choose a theme before choosing a gown, and in effect, they make the gown fit the theme they have chosen. But for some people, the choice of gown comes first, and the theme of the wedding follows the gown's theme. So if the gown that catches the bride's fancy is ultra beaded and formal, then the wedding may tend to be more formal. If the bride chooses a less formal dress, then the wedding may follow a less formal route. 2. Don't overwhelm yourself with choices. Yes. It may be tempting to try every gown that comes your way. But what if you find yourself buried under a pile of 20 or so gowns you think you really like and can't make a decision? That sort of scenario will prove to be a terrible headache not to mention a great source of stress. To avoid this, try making decisions in stages. You could try an American Idol style way of choosing a gown. You could vote off the least liked one and then reevaluate the remaining gowns. Another method is trying five gowns and then choosing two of the best. These champions will be pit against five more new gowns. Continue the tournament until you get to the perfect gown. It may become tempting to say, or, but that other gown might have been better. Try to make sure you make your final decision among five gowns. If you end up with too many to choose from you may get overwhelmed and end up choosing an inferior gown, or choosing the perfect gown but forever asking yourself whether you made the right decision or not. Choose wisely and choose a wise companion. Take along one or two of your closest friends or confidants who know a thing or two about wedding dresses and style. Their advice will come in handy when choosing a gown. Also make sure you check the durability and quality of the gown, the material and the accessories. You don't want your gown falling apart on you during the ceremonies. Terms and conditions. Legal notice. The publisher has strived to be as accurate and complete as possible in the creation of this report, notwithstanding the fact that he does not warrant or represent at any time that the contents within are accurate due to the rapidly changing nature of the internet. While all attempts have been made to verify information provided in this Publication. The publisher assumes no responsibility for errors, omissions, or contrary interpretation of the subject matter herein. Any perceived slights of specific persons, peoples, or organizations are unintentional. In practical advice books, like anything else in life, there are no guarantees of income made. Readers are cautioned to reply on their own judgment about their individual circumstances to act accordingly. This book is not intended for use as a source of legal, business, accounting or financial advice. All readers are advised to seek services of competent professionals in legal, business, accounting and finance fields. You are encouraged to print this book for easy reading. Don't leave before you press like button below and subscribe to this channel. As a subscriber you will receive a new notifications every time a new video is uploaded. Good luck.